In this episode of the Food and Beer Show, I've travelled to East Anglia to get back to the grassroots of brewing. And it's all about the base ingredient, barley. What should we do today? We could drive around and find somewhere to go. Fill up a cool box, take a blanket for the ground. Enjoy the things we like to Barley for malt is highly suited to the growing conditions of East Anglia and has been for at least four centuries. Here on the coast of Suffolk, the summer breeze wafts over the fields and keeps the barley cool so it doesn't dry out, allowing the crops to ripen in very favourable conditions. This area is a kind of English prairie with vast stretches of barley being produced as far as the eye can see. I need to find out more about the unique location and have come to visit Chris Lockhart, who farms 190 acres of malting barley at Summer Leighton Farm. The, the climate is excellent. Um, it's, it's the coastal strip um, from Norfolk to Suffolk. Um, you, you generally find sort of a 20, 30 mile an hour or mile radius from the sea coast. Gives you a good area, it doesn't get too hot. You get the mist come off the sea and the light land, which is not good enough to grow wheat, is the ideal um, soil type to grow good quality malting barley. We, we like the tie up Suffolk, Suffolk um, barley for Suffolk malt for Suffolk beer and, and I think that tie up gives us a good thing. It's, it's a big advantage is that we're not using many road miles, everything is close at hand, um, we end up with a, an excellent product um, and providing we get um, a good quality, everybody's happy, makes good beer and that's what we're all interested in. Low road miles is the key thing that, that the furthest our barley would go uh, to the maltings at any one stage would be about 40 miles. Whereas if we were growing milling wheat, we would probably be going out down to the south coast. And now I'm going to find a brewer who makes the most of this very crop. Time So I'm off to Southwold, a picture postcard Suffolk seaside town and home to the Adenham Soul Bay Brewery. Adenham's have been in Southwold since 1872 and head brewer Fergus Fitzgerald is waiting for me in the local with a pint and some info on the barley they use. So Fergus, how do we go from this to that wonderful tasty beverage? Well, the first stage in the process is to take this barley and semi-germinate it. So the barley goes to a maltster. The maltster starts that process of germination where the starch is broken down to sugar and then they dry it out and send it to us. We then take the barley, crush it up with some hot water. Uh, that releases the enzymes which break the starch down to sugar, uh, which then gives us the, the food source that we're going to give to the yeast, which is eventually going to make, make the alcohol and, and give us beer. So the barley is a massively important ingredient in that finished beer. So I guess the quality of the produce that you start with, as in any recipe, is of major importance. It, it is, and, and some of the best malting barley grown is grown in East Anglia in, in this part of the world. Um, so there's brewers all over the world that come here and, and envy the sort of barley that we have to brew with. We talk a lot about using local produce in cooking, mm. and but we don't make that association necessarily with the beer that we're drinking. But here it's hugely important. No, well it's, it's very important to us that we use local local ingredients and, and particularly where we are, actually we're surrounded by some of the best malting barley in the world so we'd be slightly crazy not to use it. So what is it about this part of the country that, that makes this particular barley so good? I think good? this part of the country has got the right soil conditions but it's also got its, its own little microclimate which is really beneficial for, for growing barley. Now I'll tell you what's also really interesting, we've got these different colours mm -hmm here so it's not just a case of the malting process no you then obviously get different flavors which um, and different colors yeah. which affect the color of the beer yeah we, th this really pale one is, is unsurprisingly called pale ale malt and that's the basis of most beer but then you can go on to use other barleys that have been roasted slightly differently they've been treated differently so they have more sugar and more toffee flavors in them uh, and that all gives us a, a, a wider palette to be able to kind of play with and, and make recipes with so one of the great creative aspects of, of being a brewer like yourself is to taste, to look at these things and decide what sort of blend you want. 
Yeah, I mean, that brewing, brewing is exactly like cooking, really. You, you start with a, a set of raw materials that have, that have certain amount of flavors, and you need to combine them in a way that give you the finished taste that, you, that you're looking for. So we've obviously got different colors of malt here, and they've gone through different kilning processes, which affects the flavor mm -hmm. and obviously the finished color of the beer. How do you go about coming up with a recipe for a finished beer? Uh, you, you start with what you, in your head what you think you want to end up with and, you th and you've got to go back to the raw materials and think how do I get from that to, to the finished flavour. Uh, and it's about, it's about the, the proportions you combine the different raw materials with, uh, the, the amounts of kind of different ingredients you use um, and how you ferment it and changing things like temperatures and times, um, quantities and that gives you the finished product. So like in cooking you've got to taste as you go along? There is a lot of tasting as you go through but because it's a fermented process actually you do have to wait until the end to really find out the flavours you've got. So there is a, there, there's a bit more of a wait till you know whether you've got it right or not. So we've got the sea just over there, I can see it from here and the barley fields are by the coast. Does that flavour, that taste of the sea get infused into the barley and end up in there because I've heard it said about Adam's beers <laughs> that they have a taste of the sea in them. They do and I, I think a lot of it is, is that maritime climate where, where obviously the barley is grown so that affects the, the kind of the flavours you get in the beer. Whether it comes out across as salty I think is, is possibly as much in, in people's heads as, as in reality. Well do you know I love the romance of that story and, and it actually does inspire me for a dish that I'm actually going to cook to go with that beer. Good. The dish I'm going to cook is Dover sole with brown shrimps, caper berries and brown butter. And I've come to the harbour at Southwold to get the fish fresh from the boat. Darren, um, I'd like two Dover sole, please, that's, mate. That's no problem. They've only been here for an hour. Fresh in this morning. Fantastic. Can you skin them for me as well, please? That's no problem. Cheers. What should we do today? We could drive around. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you later. OK, bye. Bye. <laughs> right, off to the beach to get these cooked. Right, first step, take your skin, Dover sole. And we're just going to coat that in some seasoned flour, just a bit of salt and pepper in the flour. I'm desperately trying to get my pan hot in this breeze. So hopefully we're there now. In with a little bit of the old rapeseed oil and then a good knob of unsalted butter. There we go. We'll just melt that for a couple of minutes in the pan. Right, our butter is melted, it's bubbling away. Let's just get rid of the excess flour off our Dover soles and into the frying pan. getting covered in flour here in this breeze. The sea is lapping up around my ankles. So this is proper beach cooking. <sighs> Look at that, that's bubbling away, frying beautifully. We're going to fry that for about two minutes on each side until it goes nice and golden brown. Do you know, you can't beat this. Here we are by the sea, fish caught in the sea, beer to go with it, where the barley's grown just down the road. Absolutely perfect. The sea's lapping up around my ankles. This is as good as food and beer ever gets. Right, that fish has been cooking for about two minutes. And what we're looking for is that lovely golden brown colour to that. Flip over the other one, same on the other side. Right, these, I reckon, are about ready. So, what you want to do now is put them ideally onto a warm serving plate and keep them in a warm place. Well, it's pretty warm on the beach here today. So there we go, there's one. And there is two. Fabulous. Next step, nice hot pan still, in with a good amount of unsalted butter. And we just want that to bubble away until it goes brown. We've now got what we call a burn noisette, which is basically a brown butter. So now, in with a squeeze of lemon juice, squeeze it through the fingers, just to see if you've got any cuts or nicks in your fingers. Only kidding, just catch the pips. There we go. Lovely. And then, in with our 
brown shrimps, our caper berries. Give it a good whiz round, get all those lovely flavours off the bottom of the pan and then finish off with a good sprinkling of parsley. And that is now ready to pour over the fish. Now, I'm having Adam's Explorer with my delicious Dover sole dish, but to be honest, I feel more like Robinson Crusoe with my sandy feet and my soaking wet jeans. And actually, any great English ale is gonna go brilliantly with this food. Something citrusy, hoppy, fruity, malty, all those flavors will complement beautifully. Mm. Let's tuck in. 